our last video we were focusing on the literary and mathematical economics their difference and now we will differentiate between mathematical economics and econometrics it is required because econometrics can be sometimes mixed up with mathematical economics so we are going to draw some line between these two types of quantitative ways of studying economics and understanding so mathematical economics is usually confused with econometrics that's something we want to avoid if you try to do the etymology of this uh, subject that is econometrics it is basically a portmanteau of the two words that is econo and Econo which is basically driven from economics and matrix which means measuring something so in this uh, subject we are going to measure economic variables this is why we call it econometrics and in this jargonized language we can say that econometrics is the study of empirical observations using the statistical methods of estimation and hypothesis testing so empirical observations are real life data that we gather through surveys and observation and statistical methods can be either regression correlation and all other statistical tools that we study in the subject of uh, statistics and we employ these tools for the sake of estimation and to test the hypotheses that are developed by the theorists for example we can test the law of demand we can test the theory of um, paradox of thrift so we can test all those theories by using this process now mathematical economics is basically uh, concerned with the application of the mathematical tools on the economic theory so mathematical tools will be used in this case and we are not much concerned about the measurement of variables or errors in it so it is more about precision and it's not concerned about the errors and how we are measuring the variables so there's a thin line between the two now a comparison can help us to better understand the difference between the two here we have a model a function which is basically a mathematical model because we know that when we multiply beta that is the slope with x and we add the intercept or the constant in it we will get the value of y so there is a clear picture of what the relationship is but when we add an error term in it the possibility of other variables affecting y in addition to x then we have an econometric model because now we are concerned with the measurement and we are not limiting our analysis to the effect of x on y we are saying that in addition to x there are other variables that can affect y so we are going to put all of them in a grab bag and we will say that the effect of all the variables since it shows a kind of error in the estimation this is why we call it error term so, but it's not about uh, the um, a kind of error which is going to make the equation wrong it is just a measurement approximation that is done and we try to uh, make it more precise by not overlooking those factors that are there in the effect on y as we know that law of demand it it's about the effect of uh, price for example if x is representing price and if y is representing quantity demanded we know that price is not the only determinant that can affect y we have other factors that can affect quantity demanded and all of those variables for example taste income weather location they are bundled into this error term now let's compare the two uh, that will give us a better idea um in mathematical economics we have uh, mathematical tools getting applied on economic theories and in econometrics the statistical tools they are helping us to analyze the real life or empirical data uh, on the economic variables and in mathematical economics we have common the usage of tools like algebra matrices differential calculus integral calculus and others whereas in econometrics we have regression correlation and such other tools from the statistical sciences for our help when it is the matter of mathematical economics there are no error terms in it 
as you saw in this mathematical equation the error term was not there and in the econometric model there will be an error term just like we have mentioned here it's a prerequisite because this differentiates an econometric model from a mathematical model in mathematical economics a theoretical framework is provided for empirical analysis we provide a theory that can be tested empirically whereas the econometrics they utilize the theoretical framework and they use the empirical data to analyze and check the hypothesis and in the mathematical economics we are trying to calculate things when we calculate things we are clear about the sum or the difference or the multiplication it is an exact value when it comes to estimation it happens in econometrics and it is imprecise and we allow for imprecision and the possibility of other variables affecting so it's an approximate value it's an estimation therefore it is going to help us to infer the things it is not exact or it is not going to determine so it's going to be a, a deterministic approach in mathematical economics because the answer will be calculated and not estimated so this is inferred there is a kind of guess approximation here there is determination and there is calculation with more of confidence now let us take an example that i already hinted at that is the law of demand we know about law of demand and here we are trying to express it in a mathematical equation beta is the slope p is the price alpha is the intercept or the constant and this is the dependent variable that is quantity demanded so it's a mathematical model because we haven't included any error term in it and regardless of the fact that many other variables play a significant role in determining the quantity demanded that is qd we are overlapping it we uh, we are overlooking it and we are not including those variables now uh, we have silenced those variables and in our economic analysis we call it ceteris paribus that we assume that other factors or variables they are not there they are the factors that we usually study that are related to income prices of related goods that is complements and substitutes tastes weather location and all those factors that can affect the quantity demanded but when we include these variables then we get the econometric model and we we are including it all those variables in in this uh, error term which is represented by epsilon and it uh, contains the element of the ceteris paribus and now we have an econometric model because it have it has a grab bag of all those factors that are pertaining to income and a related pri uh, goods price and taste and other and this is also called as residual because it is actually the residual after price is explained the quantity demanded so in this way we have understood that how the uh, econometric analysis can differ from mathematical economics and there is a, a significant difference between the two which should be understood whenever we are studying mathematical economics or econometrics